Yo, what's going on my people? How you doing? It's your boy JP, back with another one. Reporting live from Mexico, Cancun, Playa del Carmen. All right, so it's a uh, new today right now. It's the 1st of June. Hope you had a good end to May. You finished the month strong and you're ready to start this new month strong. It never ends. The hustle never ends. For me, I had a record month cash collected and overall revenue generated. And for me, the most remarkable thing is I had the worst start to a month ever. So for the first couple of weeks of the month, I barely made any sales. It was literal pain, literal, literal pain to the point where I'm trying, I'm doing videos about keeping your head up, motivation and, and, and just staying focused and not wanting to give up. It was rough. But all of a sudden I changed my environment and just things started to click in. And one thing I did notice that was happened is that I changed my process. So I stopped doing what was working. I tried, I was listening to other trainers and, and incorporating their ideas of like interrupting people every second and, and just dominating the conversation. And it just wasn't working. And I've realized that and then I changed things and then things started working again. But when you go for a bad run, it can be scary because you're just thinking, oh, what if, what if I don't make a sale this month? Not, not, not that I would ever think like it'd be that bad, but what if I only make a couple of sales? What am I going to do? And that's not a good place to be in. So that was one lesson is that you always want to be evolving. That's the thing. You always want to be evolving and learning new things. Even when you're doing well, you always want to be improving on your process of sales because you're still trying to get better. Until you're closing at 80%, there's always room for improvement. So you're going to want to improve because you're going to want to make more money. Every time you don't do a deal, you're going to think, how can I improve? How could I have done that better? So just allow the process to work in terms of training, improving, developing. It's like any other skill. Let's say you're trying to get good at a language. You might try throwing a word here and there. If you're trying to get good at the gym, you're going to try different exercise continuously. You're going to push yourself more and that's the same with sales. Anyway, the main lesson I wanted to talk about today was about rejection and how sales is a rejection game. Like, it literally is. It's all about rejections and how many rejections can you have and keep going because you just never know who's gonna say yes. You can have an idea, but I'm sure you've had calls and conversations where you were certain the person was gonna buy and they didn't. I'm sure you've had conversations where you was certain that the person probably wasn't gonna buy and then they bought. So you just never know. And that's the thing. You have to have that in mind. And the number one way you can combat that, obviously number one is skill. The better you get, the less rejections you'll need to make a sale, right? So if you're closing at 20%, your skill was at that level, it'll take you about five rejections to get a sale. Four rejections, then you'll get a sale. If it's at 10%, then it's gonna take you nine rejections and then you get a sale. So obviously skill is number one, but that's always something you need to improve. But the number one way to omit that or stop or win the rejection game is just to have more swings of the bat, literally. Because if you're getting, if you need nine rejections to get a sale and you're only having 50 calls, then you're only gonna have 50, uh, five sales. Whereas if you're at that same closing ratio of needing nine rejections and you have a hundred calls, then you're gonna have 10 sales. <laughs> it's really simple. So if you really wanna give yourself the best chance, just have more calls. Just pack the calendar as best as you can. Now, obviously, that depends on the offer you're on and that depends on the gig as well because oh, it's proper loud. because some gigs will give you a lot more sales opportunities than others but that's your job to put yourself in a situation where you're getting that calendar packed and don't be a victim so maybe you have to do some outbound and pack the calendar 
maybe you have to find another gig to get enough calls on the calendar. But that's the thing. And, and once you're tracking your numbers, you, you should be able to predict your income. So you wanna track everything, track how many calls you're having, how many conversations, how many sales. You wanna get that clear and then you can predict your income. So, and that will happen with time. But the main thing is you just need to anticipate rejection and just accept it and embrace it. For me, my worst times in sales was where I was really struggling with rejection. So I would, had moments where just rejection would put me in a depressive state where I would think about how bad my life was, how, what this person was doing, how am I, how am I here? I just get in a completely mental, negative mental state. Like every rejection would just destroy me. It's like anything. Let's say a guy wants to find a wife and he's speaking to women. Picture that person who takes every rejection of, oh, I'm ugly, no one likes me, I'm a loser, versus the other person who's like, oh, okay, one girl, one vote, on to the next. And whenever I've had that mentality of one person, one vote, I've always got what I wanted. Doesn't matter if that was with girls, doesn't matter if that was in the gym. Like, whenever I had that mentality of one person, one vote, I've always succeeded. And it takes a while, like, I'm not always in that mind state. Sometimes it's, it's easier said than done. But once you get to that mindset where you're just so much abundance and volume, life is easy. They always say you want to be outcome independent. That's the key to sales. However, if you only have one sales conversation per day and you need to pay your bills, of course you're gonna be outcome dependent. Of course you're not gonna be able to detach because there's so much riding on that sale. However, if you speak to someone and you know you have 50 other conversations that week, where you've got 10, five to 10 conversations that day, it's easy to detach. And not saying that you detach all the way where you don't care in terms of you don't even try, but it's a case of, it just makes the process a lot easier. Life is a lot easier once you do it that way because you've got so many swings of the bat, take it or leave it. And I'm gonna to try to help you, but it's not because I need the money. There are plenty of people to help. And like I said, whenever I've had that life set up, whatever I've done, I've succeeded. So for example, as a personal trainer in the gym, when I packed up my calendar, when I was focused, when every time I wasn't training a client, I was looking for clients or doing a class, I took out all the white space. I was just so busy that I just attracted more. It's almost like the parable in the Bible of, of the talents, where basically, long story short, the person who produced the most and was the busiest got more talents, like more gold, God gave them more. Whereas the person who, who had, who basically did nothing and was lazy and just put their gold and dug it in the ground and, and just had lots of white space on the calendar and didn't do anything at all, they lost what they had, they lost everything and they gave it to the person that did more. So that parable we should say in our sales conversation here is that the more you grind, the more goodness will come to you. So just more effort, it doesn't matter, just more effort, more effort, even when you think it's not working, it's gonna be working because through the failure, through you not doing so well, you are actually going to be getting better because you're gonna know what's working. When it's not working for you, it's working on you. And that's something I heard from Myron Golden and that was such key advice. Okay, I'm not getting a result, but something's happening. Nothing, nothing's not happening. It's impossible for nothing to not happen. If anything, you're just knowing not what to do. Every bad reaction, that's the thing, a sales conversation. Because notice the next time you're in a sales conversation and notice how you feel. So I had someone call me um, about one TV show. <laughs> it was a producer and they were asking me all these questions and like my personal life. But they had this energy. I think, I'm sure the person was gay, but they had like a very friendly, feminine energy about it. it was a guy to the point where it just lowered my whole guard. Maybe the opportunity was something that um, sounded interesting. I was intrigued, but at the same time, he was asking me questions. Well, I usually I'd be like, what? why are you asking me this? 
but his tonality, everything was one where I'm like, okay, this guy sounds pretty harmless. And that's the thing. Our sales conversations are like that. You may ask all the right questions. You may know sales in and out, done all the training, but if your energy is coming off wrong or your tone is a little bit sharp or you say ask one question, you can just raise all the sales resistance, you can undo all the hard work and, and you can struggle. But it's only after you have hundreds of hundreds of calls where you will get to that point of really understanding people, especially in your field, and especially in terms of what you're doing, what you're selling, your expertise. So, the more calls, the better. There's literally no downside. Like 100% in, no, you can't dabble. Like personal training, for example. The amount of people, ooh, the beach is looking quite decent, quite decent. The beach is looking all right. Not sure if you can see. Um, but yeah, getting a bit distracted here. But yeah, part-time never worked for anybody. So if you're a part-time trainer, you're dabbling, that is not going to work. You want to be in the gym from morning to evening. Everyone asks me, how do I start up? I've got videos. If you want to know how to start up, you go in the gym from a.m. as early as you can and you stay there till as late as you can. It's not hard, it's not complicated. Literally, from when the gym opens to when the gym shuts, you want to be inside there, speaking to people, having conversations. As Grant Cardone says, white space is the, the devil. White space is the devil. So, if you're not generating if you're not generating sales, you should be taking sales calls. And just know that these sales calls are going to be doing way good for you and beneficial for you as well. All right, guys. Well, I'm on the beach. I'm about to whip my top off. But yeah, just remember, sales is a numbers game. It's a rejection game. The more you can handle rejection, the better and, and you're just going to be a better person like i know now anything i want there's going to be a, a number there somewhere like even on my spreadsheet i have uh, figures laid out of a yes number so i know exactly what to expect and because i have the data over time i know that it's going to take a certain amount of no's for me to hear a, a yes or a certain amount of rejections. And that just makes my whole outlook a lot easier. So when I do have a bad moment and I can almost see like, okay, this is actually a lower performance period. Let me review, what am I doing wrong? And without that, if you're just guessing in the dark, it can be very emotionally up and down, up and down draining. And that's the thing you don't want. You don't want all the highs and the lows because that's no way to live life. You want steady, you want consistent. And that's why a lot of people do like a nine to five. A lot of people will go for a nine to five because they don't have to deal with the emotional up and downs. And... But sales is one of those things. There's literally no cap. It's beautiful. There's literally, it's like, it's like athletics. There's no cap to how well you can perform, how many trophies you can win. It's just about the dedication. And that's the thing, the dedication, once you're doing your training, the dedication, you're really putting the effort and energy into it, you are going to succeed. Whenever I'm not on sales calls, if I'm not in the gym, I am going to be doing sales training. So I'm always listening to books, I'm listening to poor recordings, I'm doing training with my coach. You never want to be watching Netflix or wasting too much time with chicks or things that are never going to be around when life gets tough. I was doing a video on my IG the other day. All 
all these girls and frivolous things, these parties, okay, it's fun in the moment, but when things get real, you are never going to hear from them. These people you will never ever hear from. I think I have gone too far. Okay. So guys, anyway, I'm a bit distracted here. So I'm going to wrap up. I think I need to walk around the other way. Actually, you know what, let's keep filming. There's more we can do. There's more to discuss. So yeah, it's just a mental game. So a lot of this, it's just mental. It's just what's, it's how you're feeling, it's how you're thinking. And that's actually gonna affect your energy and calls. And that's why it's so critical. Between calls, you need to reset. And don't take any disappointment or frustration into the next call. Because that's gonna affect your performance. And then that's gonna affect your energy for the next call. And before you know it, you're in a slump. Which is sales hell. <laughs> if you used to be in a slump, let's say you used to close in one in five, now you haven't closed in 15 or 20. And it happens to the best salesman in the world. You listen to the top salesmen, they'll talk about slumps and what they need to get out of it. And it's gonna happen at the same time. Just stay positive, do what you need to do. Listen to music, go on a date. I'm not saying that, you know, girls and dates are bad, no way. Sometimes that's, that's what, that might be just what you need. You know, just enjoy yourself for a night, have a nice thing recharge your batteries and get back to it. You wanna have a balance. Too much of anything is a bad thing. You can do too much sales. I've done too much sales and I've regretted it. It's definitely possible. You wanna have a nice balance of work life and of work life and social life. Not a full balance, not talk about 50-50, but just sprinkle some in. Sprinkle some fun in to the point where you're excited to work and rewarding yourself. So for example, even this is Saturday, I rewarded myself by taking the weekend off because the last thing you want to do and what I actually found myself doing is I would work so hard and I would not reward myself. So it's like, hey, I've done all this work here and my life it's exactly the same. What was the point? <laughs> and even though you've got more digits in the account, digits are just digits. Money without flow of money is actually useless if you've got money sitting in an account. And don't get me wrong, you are going to get a form of security and a form of options. So you with 500 pound in your account is gonna be way different from you with 5,000 pounds in your account. 50,000 just lying around the things you could do okay I've got this money I could travel here I could travel there a lot more you can do a lot more experiences you can have as well but you're gonna have a much more visceral feeling when you do something so let's say you do travel you go on a vacation you buy yourself something nice you go on a nice date or go on a nice experience you're rewarding your subconscious mind that you are on the right track and that you are doing the right thing. Likewise, if you don't perform, then you don't want to reward yourself anyway. That is the fastest way to do the opposite. Because you've broken that link of, of reward and effort and now you're rewarding yourself for no reason. Some nice views on the beach here. Anyway, wishing you the best in June. You get it in, putting that work in. And actually, I'm going to be writing a book all about fitness cells, health and fitness cells, the best way to have a conversation with people, whether we're talking about overall weight loss, muscle building diabetes, high blood pressure. I'm gonna cover all of the different avatars, all of people's different problems, all the things you're gonna hear from each person. 
and how to overcome objections, common fitness objections, the psychology of selling health and fitness. I'm gonna make it my life's work and I'm gonna do it almost like Apple. So I'm gonna keep on updating, keep on revising. I'm gonna keep on, and it's gonna be for free as well. I'm gonna send it to you all out for free and then you can absorb the knowledge that I've gained over how many years now? Over the last, since 2017, really and truly, that's like seven years of purely focusing on fitness and business. Anyway, thanks for watching and like, subscribe, you know all that good stuff and I'll catch you on the next one.